flashlight It's something you can ride to and vibe to I'm just giving you the keys to survive Never let society tell you how to begin living your life By following the norm and trends I warn my friends, don't get blinded by the media I'd rather be myself, take flight, gotta speed it on speed die. And meanwhile, my dream right beside me with a smile She like. Wow, this looks really good. It's breakfast time in Chengdu, the city of gastronomy. I'm Ryan. Today I'll be eating cold pot fish. That's right, cold pot, not hot pot. But it's actually similar to hot pot. The difference is they cook the fish for you and they bring it out to you in a pot cold. And then you eat the fish and then you turn on the hot pot and proceed like a normal hot pot. Of course, with hot pot, you're gonna get some spice. Chili peppers are hot pot, right? Well. Yeah, I guess that's true, but I'd also argue that no hot pot is complete, in Sichuan at least, without Hua Jiao. The famous numbing pepper of Sichuan, you've probably heard me talk about it before. It's the numbing peppercorn. It's really popular in Sichuan. Tingling sensation that it gives you, it literally makes your mouth vibrate. This is long overdue. I'm gonna finish this bowl of noodles and then we're gonna hit the market and get into the details of the Sichuan numbing peppercorn. Well, that was a great breakfast. Nine quai for that giant bowl of noodles. My lips are tingling a little bit from it, from the Sichuan peppercorn. So Sichuan peppercorn in Chinese is called hua jiao, which literally means flower pepper. They call it that because when it dries out, it opens up, it kind of looks like a flower. We call it Sichuan peppercorn, sometimes just Sichuan numbing pepper, um, Sichuan pepper. Uh, but the fact is, it's not a pepper, it's not a peppercorn. It's actually the dried out hull of the seeds of various Chinese prickly ash trees. These trees are actually part of the citrus family, which is important because in 1968, America banned any citrus coming from China. There was a citrus canker outbreak. Uh, uh, bacterial disease that was killing off citrus trees. So the Sichuan peppercorn was part of that ban. So you couldn't legally get the Sichuan peppercorn in America. I say legally because of course it was smuggled in. In fact, a report by the USDA said that between 2002 and 2006, the Sichuan peppercorn was the most confiscated plant coming from China to America. These, this guy over here has some interesting shit. Let's take a break and go see what the is going on on this pile of snakes and turtles and stuff. Even this kid's like new. <laughs> okay, so the Sichuan peppercorn banned in America, the most confiscated food item. Um, and a big part of that was because in 2000 there was a big boom in immigration. A lot of people from China were going to America, so uh, they were probably bringing it in their suitcases and because they wanted it, they needed it. Let me tell you, the first time you have it, you get this numbing sensation and it's weird. You didn't know food could do that. People compare it to putting your tongue on a 9 volt battery, that, that buzz and that metallic taste. It's kind of like that. Uh, at first I didn't know if I liked it and then after a few rounds you start to get addicted to it and you just want it, you crave it. And it, it kind of buzzes you both physically and euphorically. In 2005, after 37 years, the ban was lifted. You were allowed to have the Sichuan peppercorn in America, uh, but under the condition that you heat it at 60 degrees for 10 minutes. So it, the idea was that it would kill all the bacteria in it. But toasting them for this long left the citrus shell seeds a shell of their former shells. Does that make sense? They lost their potency and flavor. 
And plus, it wasn't really worth the Chinese farmer's money to, and his time to heat them to, um, to get the certificate to say that they've been heated. It was just not a lot of farmers were willing to do that when the biggest market was in China by far. But someone somewhere pushed on and eventually it was let in. The Animal and Health Inspection Service declared that it was fine. Uh, most people were heating it up anyway when they got it. They would toast it or they would um, like grind it up and it rarely left the kitchen. So America got its Sichuan numbing pepper. No toasting necessary. All right, along the edge of the market here, they're always hiding the Hua Jiao. Uh, this place here will definitely have some. So there are two kinds of Hua Jiao in Sichuan. There's the green and the red. The green tends to be more citrusy, kind of a pinier taste. The red is more earthy. You'll find they use the red in more heavy dishes, um, kind of saltier dishes. But the green is better on its own. It's better with like lighter meats like fish. Hua Jiao. Hua evergreen type taste to it and my mouth is it's happening fast that's the green the red I'm not gonna be able to taste the red now because the green is numb to my mouth yeah the red definitely more earthy um, Kind of a hits you harder too. This is Tong Nali Lai Da. This one. Huh? You saw this is Chan Di. My mouth is absolutely on fire. It's almost hard to breathe. It's a little too intense. Oh man. Powerful, powerful stuff. I don't recommend eating it on its own. Just feels like vibrations in my mouth. Even though Sichuan peppercorns are native to Sichuan, the best red ones are grown in Gansu province, and the best green ones are grown in Yunnan. I prefer kind of more heat. Yunnan's south of us, Gansu's north of us. Oh my goodness. My mouth is going fing bananas. This lady over here has some too, I believe. The Hua Jiao has been used in Sichuan cooking for a very long time. Before the chili pepper came along, they used to pair it with vinegars, like sour tastes. And then the chili pepper came and it was like a match made in heaven. Spiciness of the chili pepper went really well with the Hua Jiao. That's the mala flavor. Mala is like the most important flavor in Sichuan cooking. So many dishes are mala, which literally means numbing spicy. So the hot pepper burns your mouth, but the Hua Jiao numbs it so you can eat more of the spiciness and the flavors go well together. It was just a match made in heaven. Man, I still got that burn going. It's just starting to wear off now. It's been maybe 10 minutes. More Hua Jiao here. Hi. Hey, you Gansu? Gansu Hua Jiao? This is Jigo. Qinghai Hua Jiao. Qinghai. Qinghai. So this is from Qinghai province, which is right next to Gansu. It's north of us. It's probably the most expensive. 12 Kwai. 11, 10, and then the green. I don't know how much the green. The green might be cheaper. So, Xiao Qian? This is 9 Kwai. 9 Kwai. Oh, I'm going to put it here. Yeah, you can smell the fragrance in that one. Compare it to this guy, which has a bit more stems. Yeah, this one definitely smells better. Mm. 
I can't. I was gonna ask to sample more, but I'm dying here. What is this guy doing? <laughs> Sleeping? It's very sleepy. These kids are making fun Okay. Uh, we have good times in Fulong, the market area. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to leave here. I'm going to go and meet up with my favorite dining companion, Sarah. And we're going to go eat this cold pot fish. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. My mouth is finally stopped vibrating. Um, and I'm curious to see what kind of hua they use in it, whether it's red, whether, whether it's green. Long Guo Yu, cold pot fish. Hungry? Let's go. Hi. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Uh, so today, what do you want to? Today we want Long Guo Yu. Okay. All right. And that is buffet. Um, the slack and the fish and the cold dish. Is great. Uh, is um, per person. I suggest you this this fish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What kind of fish is this? Uh, and, and in Chinese. So bian yu. So so. So bian yu. So bian yu. Okay. One hundred and ten RMB. For two people. Two. Yes. And two it's people. fish and other things. Yes. Yes. Snack. Cold fish. A cold dish and a fish and the vegetables is all free. Yeah. And all in it. Okay. And, and the drinks, um, except uh, alcohol, uh, uh, except uh, like, uh, like this, uh, and beer. Beer. Yeah. 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 Come say hello to my camera. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So we've been here many a times, if you haven't noticed yet. Uh, and this girl speaks English pretty well. Uh, over here. So, that's why we're so familiar with one another. Oh. Yeah. And this drink is free. Okay. Oh. Really? Oh, I love it. Dude, you're swimming upside down. And it has hua jiao? Yeah. What kind? Green or red? Hua jiao? Uh, double. Double? Double in it. Ooh, yeah. double. Super ma. And it's the best. Yeah. And after you eat the fish, you can add the vegetables mm. in it. When we turn this on, yeah. it gets hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So when they say cold pot fish, I guess it's not actually cold. I thought it would actually be cold, but it's just the hot pot is not hot. Um, the fish, the dish is still hot. The fish is warm. It's been cooked in the back and they bring it out so you don't have to cook the fish yourself, which is good because fish is kind of difficult to cook. I think that's the whole idea behind this dish is the hard part's done. Now you just can cook the vegetables because it's easy to overcook fish. Um, it falls apart, turns into nothing in the hot pot. So it makes sense to me. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Really like buttery almost. It doesn't have that muddy taste. No. So in China they'll usually eat the meat first and the vegetables second. 
So it's not a big deal for them to go, okay, let's eat the meat, and then we'll turn it on, cook the vegetables, and eat that. In the West, we like to mix it. Um, but they do that sometimes, but not usually. Even in hot pot, when you're cooking everything, it will start with the meat. I've heard that this dish was invented by Su Dong Po. Do you know who Su Dong Po is? He's a famous poet in Sichuan. He, I, didn't know it. I, th I think I've come across a few dishes in this series that were invented by Su Dong Po. I know there's one coming up for sure. It's called Dong Po pork or something. Um, How do you like this dish? Oh, it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. You like it? It's good. It's very good. Um, Sarah knows this already, but I have a little bit of a crush on this girl. I think you understand why. Yeah, she's adorable. Eat the peanut. Eat the peanut. Boiled nuts in China. That's a thing. I believe this fish, if you can look at the skin here, she said it was spikeless. I think she meant scaleless. It's a scaleless fish. She's heating up. She's on fire. So, fish is done. Now we've turned it on and we're putting in our veg. Got some mushrooms. So we got a nice hot bubbling pot here. And from here on out, it's just basically like hot pot, which I don't want to spoil too much because that's coming soon in Chengdu City of Gastronomy. Stay tuned. My mouth is tingling from all that. We're done the meal. Actually, they brought us these bonus gifts. A little, uh, little duck head. I've never had duck head before. I don't like the fact that it's looking at me with a smirk, but uh, I'll try it. Why not? Mm. My brains are good. What else do you eat on this though? Eyeball? Goodbye my friends. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe. I got lots more videos coming up and I, um, I want to do more videos about Hua Jiao because I think it's really fascinating. Hope you learned a little something. Hope you enjoyed the video. And now it's time for a little jingle. It's going to rock your world like the Hua Jiao tangle. You like that, Ryan? You want some duck? What? That's weird. Eating the webbing out of their feet? There's nothing.